The diagram below represents structures in the skin of two people. So we've got person A and person B. Person A, person B. Both these people were in the same room at the same time. What does that tell you? That your room temp is constant. Okay, it is the same. But one person was exercising while the other person was sitting still. So this person is inactive. The skin surface temperature for both people was measured after 10 minutes. Okay, people, things that must be going off in your head. First of all, room temperature. Okay, you've got normal room temperature, everyone is happy. You've got a person exercising and a person just sitting still. The person sitting still is going to be chilling. Are they going to be making it, using energy in any form and releasing any energy and heat? No, they're just sitting calmly. Okay, whereas the person who's exercising, they are increasing their body temperature and they're going to have to work uh, uh, do something to make the blood temperature come down. We call that thermo regulation. And thermo means temperature and regulation to regulate that temperature. So to keep a balance. Why? Because most of your body is made up of proteins and proteins, you will remember from last year, are sensitive to temperature and they're sensitive to pH. If that's the wrong pH or the temperature is too high or too low, the proteins will denature. All your cells, all your hormones, all your antibodies and all your enzymes are made of what? Protein. Okay, so we can't afford for our proteins to be messed around. We've got to keep our temp body temperature constant. That's why we are called homeothermic animals. Homeothermic. Homeothermic means that we control our body temperature. And I don't know if you remember that a boy kilo thermic organism is what we call cold blooded these are warm blooded warm blooded would be birds and mammals and poikilothermic or cold blooded examples would be your fish reptiles and amphibians okay and they cold-blooded they can't control body temp okay that was just a little bit of <laughs> revision alrighty looking at this diagram here what can we see first of all person A there is no sweat here whereas here we have sweat okay and that color looks terrible, so let's go with blue. We have sweat. There's the sweat. And the sweat is going to evaporate. Okay, there's the sweat gland. And these are your blood vessels, or your actually capillaries. So blood vessels. And the specific kind of blood vessels, they are capillaries. In skin. Now, what do these capillaries do? They come close to the surface so that when they are so close to the surface and they open, and that was somebody, I can't remember whose question it was. Here we go. Um, this was Mpilole. Um, Mpilole. Mpilole. Um, you wanted to know the difference between vasodilation and vasoconstriction here we go look here these are big they wide so you see the blood vessels they are large and here the blood vessels are small okay so the large ones are big so that is they dilated so think of di let me write the word down here dilated 
Okay, and if dilated, the DI, think that they are wide. Okay, they are increased size. So the I for dilated and the I for increased. Okay, so here, these are all, di these are dilated. Nice and big, they're allowing lots of blood to go to the skin. And then you've got the sweat gland getting lots of blood. The sweat gland makes sweat. The sweat goes onto the skin. It, it then evaporates. And as it evaporates, it cools the skin down. How? I want you to do this. Take your hand and take your tongue. It doesn't look great, but do this. Take your tongue and go and lick your hand. Now, gently blow on it. And as you're blowing on it, you'll feel that part of your skin gets cool. It gets cold. That is how we, why we sweat to cool our body down. It's a, it's a mechanism our body has to cool us down. Because as that sweat leaves, the heat is dissipated. Now, it cools the skin down. The blood vessels are close to the surface of the skin that's now getting cold because of the, or cooler because of the uh, sweat. And it then cools this blood that's over here. It cools that blood down too. Now, that cooler blood goes chi -chi 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 back to the body. Okay, uh, let's go with orange. Here, for person A, these blood vessels are small. They narrow. Okay, not wide like these. They narrow. So what's happened here is that we now have constriction. So if it is constriction, then we talk about vast. So, constriction. Vaso means vessel. Constriction means to go narrow. Contract. Okay, so to contract, constriction. Similar words. So it constricts. And um, remember when we did pupillatory functioning? When the circular muscles contract, the pupil con constricts, constriction to get small. So here, narrow blood vessels, the vasoconstriction, and that is going to cause blood pressure changes. Okay, the blood is directed away. So this would be, for example, if someone has an adrenaline surge, they're going to look like person A. Because they're going to have very little blood to their skins, okay? They're going to be all nice and pale. Why? That blood's going to the muscles so they can run. All right, person B, these blood vessels here, let's just get blue here. This is vasodilation. Vaso, again, simply means vessel. Okay, so vaso, vessel. So it's your arteries, your veins, your capillaries. If they constrict, vasoconstriction. If they dilate and more blood flows through them, vasodilation. Okay, now, which person? A or B is exercising? Come on, people, this is such a bleh question. I mean, for heaven's sake, clearly it is person B. They are. Why? Because they've got their blood going here. Look at this. They've got the, 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 the sweat Okay, two visible reasons. One is the sweat and um, vasodilation. See, blood vessels are nice and large. I mean, how easy is this? All right, I need another color. Where is a navy? Let's do a navy. Now it says name one hormone that will ha have the same effect on the blood vessels that is observed in person A. So person A, we've got vasoconstriction and we have no sweat because this little sweat gland's not getting any blood to make sweat. That would be adrenaline. Okay, it would be adrenaline. Now remember, thyroxin is going to make the blood vessels to the skin dilate. When we are hot, we are exercising so we can sweat, so that we can cool ourselves down. Okay, we're also going to have antidiuretic hormone doing its job in the kidneys and saying, listen guys, 
uh, you need to keep as much water in the body as possible because it's anti-weeing. It's an anti-diuretic hormone, anti-weeing hormone. And it wants to keep water in your body. So when it's hot and you want to keep lots of water in your body, then you're going to have lots of anti-diuretic hormone. When it's cold, you can look at a cup of coffee and you need to go for a wee. Okay, you need to urinate. So you're going to have less anti-diuretic hormone. Okay, then it says, after 10 minutes, the surface of the skin temperature for each person is measured. So person A is now going to be 37,2. That is normal. All right? Person B, though, this is the person who was exercising. They're sitting at 36,6. Why has the skin temperature in person A... Um, Explain why the skin temperature of person A was higher after 10 minutes. Okay, why was it higher for the person who was sitting like a couch potato watching the other person doing exercises? Because that person wasn't exercising. They were just sitting there and their body was in a homeostatic state. They didn't have to cool the body down, but they also didn't have to warm the body up. The body was just normal. Our normal body temperature, around 37. In fact, it's probably 36,5, 36,6 to 37,2, 37,4. If it goes higher than 37,4, we have a problem. That's why with COVID now, everybody's doing the, anybody doing the thermometer check, if you over um, 37,4, then people start panicking. All right, that's why. Your body temperature fluctuates. Hot day, cold day, in a car, out of a car, in the sun, out of the sun, etc. But your person who was sitting there, they didn't do any exercise. There was no reason to increase or decrease their body temperature. But the person B who was exercising released some of that heat, that energy that they were making from the glucose and the oxygen being oxidized by the cells during cellular rest. Operation. Do you remember all of this from grade 11? This is why you did it in grade 11. So you've got cellular respiration happening in the mitochondria. Why? To convert the glucose and oxidize it into carbon dioxide and ATP. All right, so we've got the energy now. So the body says, okay, but now hold on. We get hot. The body then works hard to cool down. And with the body cooling down, Okay, with the sweat and the, and the uh, um, dilated blood vessels, everything cools down, but it goes, continues to cool down. Why? It's a negative feedback mechanism. All right, it cools down, and what's going to happen then? A stimulus is going to be picked up by the body, okay, by the thermoregulators in the skin, and you have them all over. And they're going to say, no, hold on, hold on. We, the body temperature is going down a bit. We need to just stimulate the increase in body temperature. And the body temperature will then pick up again. It is a negative feedback mechanism.